Hello friends, welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. Uh, in this tutorial, uh, I will be discussing very basics of uh, neoplasia, the fundamental concepts in neoplasia. Okay. So the learning uh, outcomes of today's uh, tutorial will be, uh, we'll just know these words, the tumor or neoplasia or cancer or malignant neoplasm. And we'll uh, understand a bit about the historical aspects of uh, the cancer we will know what are benign tumors what are malignant tumors and what are these mixed tumors or teratomas hamartomas cholestomas and then finally we will end with uh, understanding the differences between benign and malignant tumors on gross examination well uh, before i forget i would like to tell you that do subscribe this channel to get updates on more videos to come okay now tumor literally means any swelling. This was first described by Celsus. If you remember uh, inflammation, you know that there are five cardinal signs of acute inflammation, isn't it? Which are rubar, which means redness, calor, which means increased heat, the tumor, which means swelling, dolar, pain, and the last one is the functio lisa, which means loss of function. So it is in this context the word tumor uh, originated. Hippocrates, one of the greatest Greek physicians whom we refer to as father of medicine, he noticed that you know the blood vessels surrounding the malignant tumors like that of a clause of the crap and then that is when he first coined the word karkinos uh, which is the Greek word for crap. So that is how the word karkinos derived and then the carcinos or carcinoma is just a literal translation of this Greek word called karkinos. Claudius Gallen, he is another uh, great Greek physician way back in 2nd century AD. He used the word onkos for the first time. Okay, So onkos was used to describe the swelling. Okay, The tumor he referred to as onkos. He called or he basically distinguished tumors into three categories. One, uh, according to nature, he even thought the pregnant uterus is a tumor. And second one is exceeding nature, something like, you know, the collection of fluid, the, the collection of pus, which uh, results in the formation of a swelling. And that he referred to as a tumor, which exceeding nature. And then the third category of swelling, uh, he referred to as something which is contrary to the nature, okay, which is what we now refer to as neoplasms or new growth. So now we know that neoplasia means new growth. Tumor is just a word used to describe any swelling. Coming to the definition of neoplasia, it's it's really very difficult to define neoplasia. And one definition comes uh, you know, closest to understand the concepts of neoplasia. And that was given by Rupert Allen Willis, who, uh, you know, who was a, uh, uh, an Australian pathologist. Okay. He described neoplasm as an abnormal mass of tissue, the growth of which exceeds and it is uncoordinated with that of a normal tissue. Okay. And then it persists even after the cessation of the stimuli, which has evoked that change or persist after cessation of that causative stimuli. So this definition was given by Rupert Allen Willis in the pre-molecular era. Okay. So now with the advent of molecular genetics and molecular techniques, the neoplasia now can be defined as a disorder of cell growth, which is triggered by a series of acquired mutations of a single cell and its clonal progeny. Okay, so this is a simplified definition in the modern era where it just says that the tumor is basically you know, triggered by a series of acquired mutation. So this is where the understanding of molecular you know, uh, mechanisms in the causation of cancer comes to uh, the picture. Well, you can go through uh, you know, a few of my uh, video tutorials which describes the molecular basis of cancers as well. So we need to understand that this abnormal mass of tissue which differs from the normal in terms of its growth, in terms of its differentiation, in terms of its function and in terms of its organization. All tumors have two basic components. One, the neoplastic cells and two, the reactive stroma. Okay, The neoplastic cells is what constitutes the tumor parenchyma, whereas the reactive stroma is composed of the connective tissue, the blood vessels and the cells of immune system. And these cells could be of the innate or adaptive immune system. The classification of tumors and the biological behavior of the tumors is based on the type of neoplastic cells or the tumor parenchyma, whereas the growth and the spread of the tumor is dependent on the stroma. 
And what we need to understand here is that the amount of neoplastic cells and stroma varies from tumor to tumor. In some tumors, the neoplastic cells will be predominant. Okay, These tumors will be very fleshy in appearance, whereas in some tumors, the stromal component is more than the neoplastic component. Okay? For example, in one of the type of uh, carcinoma of breast, that is infiltrating ductal carcinoma, okay, you can uh, see that the stromal component is so predominant, there will be exuberant fibroblastic proliferation and that we refer to as desmoplasia or the desmoplastic stroma and these tumors will be formed to harden consistency and again all tumors are classified either as the benign tumors or the malignant tumors a tumor is said to be benign you know when the appearances whether it could be a macroscopic appearance or the microscopic appearance you know when they look relatively innocent okay everybody wants to know that their tumor is benign because they are predominantly non-lethal tumors okay they are localized tumors and then they do not spread to the others and then they can be easily removed whereas malignant tumors when you say the tumor is malignant it's most often deadly tumors okay, at this point i would like to tell that all malignant tumors are collectively called as cancers these are dangerous because they have the ability to invade into the adjacent structures and then destroy the adjacent structures moving on to uh, you know understanding some more nomenclature the benign tumors are basically uh, classified on a histogenetic uh, basis to designate a benign tumor all you have to do is to attach a suffix oma to the cell of its origin and mesenchymal tumors are the ones which you know which follow this rule very often example if the tumor is derived from the fibroblast the benign tumor is referred to as fibroma if the tumor is derived from the cartilage the benign tumor is referred to as chondroma and if the tumor is derived from the smooth muscle it is called leomyoma coming to the benign epithelial tumors the nomenclature is a bit complex it is you know it can be based on the cells of origin it can be based on the macroscopic architecture or it can be based on the microscopic pattern the most common terminology used in uh, benign epithelial tumor is adenoma which means these are the tumors which are derived from the glandular epithelium and then they may or may not form glands most often they form glandular structures and that is the reason why they are called adenomas the nomenclature of benign epithelial tumor can also be based on the cells of origin for example if you say renal tubular adenoma it means that the benign tumor is arising from the renal tubular epithelial cells based on the macroscopic appearance you can refer uh, tumor as papilloma when they have finger like projections and these projections are called papillae they can be uh, called as cyst adenomas when macroscopically the tumor is predominantly cystic if you see you know a visible projection above a mucosal surface then you can refer that to as polyp so the nomenclature can be a combination of any of these three uh, patterns for example uh, you can use the word adenomatous polyp when on microscopy it is gland forming and on macroscopic it is a polypoid structure and that's how you have nomenclature based on the macroscopic and microscopic pattern as well so coming to the malignant tumors the nomenclature follows the same rule as benign but then with few additions the word sarcomas are used to describe the tumors arising from solid mesenchymal tissues so for example we talked about fibroma as a benign mesenchymal tumor the same if it is malignant we call it as fibrosarcoma similarly chondroma is a benign a tumor of cartilage whereas chondrosarcoma is a malignant tumor of the cartilage leomyoma is a benign tumor of smooth muscle and leomyosarcoma is a malignant tumor of smooth muscle so the word carcinoma is used to describe a malignant tumor of epithelial origin for example squamous cell carcinoma okay where the tumor is arising from squamous epithelium malignant tumor of squamous epithelium whereas adenocarcinoma is a malignant tumor arising from the glandular epithelium you use the word leukemias to describe the malignant tumor arising from blood forming cells and you use the word lymphomas to describe malignancies arising from the lymphoid cells so at this point you need to understand the difference between the terminologies cancer and carcinoma a cancer is a common term used to describe all malignant neoplasms okay whether it is mesenchymal or whether it is epithelial whereas carcinoma is a specific term used to describe malignancies arising from the epithelial cells okay or malignancies of epithelial origin now we'll move on to understand some different 
um, tumors other than benign and malignant. There are tumors which are referred to as mixed tumors. These are the tumors where you know the single neoplastic cell can differentiate into different types of cells. For example, pleomorphic uh, you know, adenoma of uh, salivary gland. Where this tumor comprises of tissue which has the epithelial component as well as the myxoid stoma which is admixed within the epithelial component. Okay, but what is important here is that both epithelial and the myxoid stoma they are derived from a single clone which is capable of producing both these cell types and that is why these tumors are referred to as mixed tumors. Another important uh, terminology is uh, teratoma. Teratomas are the tumors which contain mature or immature cells which are derived from more than one germ cell layer. Sometimes you know all three germ cell layers can be uh, there ectoderm, the endoderm and the mesoderm. You call this is teratoma because it is derived from the word teras which in Greek means a monster. These are the tumors which originate from totipotential germ cells. I mean these germ cells are found in ovary, the testes and the embryonic, uh, the rest in the midline. What is important to understand here is that these totipotential germ cells have the ability to differentiate into any of these cell lines. Okay. It can differentiate into uh, the endodermal uh, line or the mesoderm or the ectoderm. So basically they can differentiate into any cell type in the adult body. So that is why these teratomas contains you know, a varied uh, mixture of population of cells arising from different cell types. The most common example uh, which we can quote is the teratoma arising in the ovary. The next one is hamartoma. Hamartoma are basically a benign mass of tissue where characteristic feature is disorganized cells. This particular mass is uh, basically disorganized but contains cells which are indigenous to the involved site. That means these tumors contain or uh, they are composed of elements which are normally found at that site. But then they are haphazardly arranged. The most common examples being hamartomas in the lung or hamartomas in the heart, hamartomas in the breast, etc. Another word is choristoma. Choristoma is basically the heterotopic rest of cells, which means excess of normal tissue which is found in abnormal location. For example, you can find, you know, pancreatic tissue uh, appearing as small masses and uh, pancreatic tissue and this tissue can be found in the submucosa of the stomach or the submucosa of the intestine more commonly in the duodenum that is when we call it as choristoma okay so in simple choristoma is basically the presence of normal tissue in abnormal location the last part of this tutorial is to understand uh, the gross differences between benign and malignant tumors see when we consider boundaries as a feature in benign tumors these are uh, often well encapsulated or well circumscribed tumors whereas in the case of malignant tumors or cancers, the boundaries are irregular or poorly circumscribed. The surrounding tissue in benign tumors is often compressed, whereas the surrounding tissue in malignant tumors are often invaded by these cancer cells. And the benign tumors, usually the size is very small, whereas malignant tumors, they are often larger. But again, there are always an exceptions to any rules. Okay, sometimes benign tumors will be extremely large, whereas malignant tumors will be very, very small. So size is not a criteria to differentiate benign and malignant tumors. But usually, benign tumors are smaller, whereas malignant tumors are larger. Okay, and the secondary changes like hemorrhage, cystic degeneration, or necrosis is common in malignant tumors as compared to benign tumors. Okay, so these are a few of the gross. Uh, differences between benign and malignant tumors. In the next tutorial, I'll be discussing uh, in detail about you know the microscopic uh, differences between benign and malignant tumors. So I'll be talking more about the anaplasia or the dysplasias and uh, you know the concepts of invasion and metastasis. So in summary, we understood what tumor or neoplasia or cancer means. Some basic understanding between benign and malignant tumors, and we came to know what these mixed tumors, teratomas, hamartomas, and choristomas are. And then few, you know, differentiating gross appearances between benign and malignant neoplasm. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Do comment and don't forget to subscribe this channel to get more updates on more videos to come. Please do share. Thank you.